All right, guys, what's cracking? Doing another video for y'all. Trap modification in my cousin's house. Same cousin that went fishing with me in this video. Squeaker. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Woo! <laughs> okay, Flair. All right, guys, but this is just a few of the modifications we make on our traps. And um, these are, we're just going to show you a few of the traps that we do it on. All right, guys, but anyways, let's get into today's video. All right, guys, so the first trap we're going to be talking about is little one and a half for like raccoons and the occasional fox um well we're just going to talk about how we modify them all right guys so first thing that we like to do we like to night latch all of our traps every single one of them um and except for dps but we'll talk to you about what we do for dps as well all right so for the one and a half you see right there look straight down that it's a little that pants in a little too hot so click that down to the night latch See how level that pan's sitting right now? So what we do is, and then another thing we do is where your spring set on this little plate right here, take these right here and bend them down at a 45 degree angle. And we'll get back to you as soon as we do that. All right, so as you can see, we bend these down at a 45 degree angle, and that helps for these springs not to pop off when you get a strong critter in there. And it helps for um, stabilizing the trap when you're bedding it down. And, uh, the next thing is, where your jaws are, we're going to bend these two pieces up so when you get a strong critter, he doesn't pop your jaws out and he's gone. Alright guys, so you can see his comparison right here. These are pretty straight out. You can see how much higher these ones are than these ones right here. Now this helps when you get a strong critter and he's yanking on your trap. These are going to be hard for him to pop out, whereas these ones are just straight. He can just and be gone. All right, guys, so that's our what we do for fully modifying one and a half. Um, you see, we bent the two spring bars down, night latched our trap, and then bent the two hinges up. So that's what we do for one and a half. Next, we'll get into kind of bears. All right, guys, so what we have here is our Bridger 155. Now, um, normally when these come, these whiskers are bent straight. And what we have we've done here, we bent them out and then bent them back down. So when you're setting these in trail sets or blind sets, you have them wind up. Because if they're straight down, like this 220s here, this one is straight down as well. But if they're straight down in the middle, uh, something's not gonna want to walk straight through that. They're gonna walk to the side. So if you have them to the side and he walks straight through it, when he brushes his ears or his neck up against it, he's gonna get caught right away. This trap is mainly used for raccoons, opossums, and other small game. And it is most commonly used for muskrats in their runs um, and setting out right outside of the muskrat lodges. Okay, so the next trap we're going to be getting into is the big old slosh donkey 220. This trap is used for mainly um, beavers and bigger trail sets. Um, and now as you can see, we got the whiskers already bent out. This is how I like to bend my whiskers for the 220 because if he walks here or here, some part of him is still going to brush up against the, um, the whiskers here. So I'm not going to set this one on camera, but it's the same concept as the 155. So, um, this one is great for muskrat runs, trail sets, and um, good for beavers as well. So, okay, so now the next trap we're going to be getting into is a number two foothold. Okay, there we go, edit that part out. Cut that off right there. All right, so as you can see, we've already done all the modifications on this. But now I'm just going to talk about night latching a predator trap. We've already modified these ones. So when it goes in the night latch position, it is setting fairly level. Okay, now the reason people say run three to three and a half pounds of pound tension is because when a predator, see with a, a, a regular just one and a half, um, see you want the pan to just almost fall down on itself. So this one, I can lift it all the way up to the top and it's not going to move until I push down on it. So the reason that is with predator traps, you want them to put all their weight on that pan before it snaps. On, the, on their leg because this right here a coon could touch it with his toe and then there it is going to close on them. predators you want a nice deep pad catch on them. you want their toes to still be touching the pan so that's why people say run to three to three and a half pounds of pan tension now what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about dp so this is my cousin's dp i did not bring any of mine now we're going to talk about night latching dps do you night latch dps is it better no it you don't night latch dps okay so right there you can see the DP, the dog, is all the way down in the notch. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take that and put the dog just barely in the notch. That is how I night latch my traps. All right, right here, right here. So we're going to put the dog it's not even focusing. just barely in the notch. See how just barely in the notch that is? See how Kuhn will just have to barely touch it? And it's on him. So that's all we do for DPs. We don't modify them. Of course, we will put a little bit of an extension to this swivel. We have our 
11 gauge trap in wire here. So that's all we really do for modifying our traps. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch y'all in the next video. Now, enjoy these bloopers. Alright guys, this is our 220 here, and this can be used on our larger, maybe predator sets or beaver sets for our game trails. Now, you know, beavers live in the water and they come up on shore for their uh, bank dens. Oh, shoot, what did I say? Alright guys, so for underwater, normally you're going to bait up your, your beaver trail sets because, you know, they need something to smell. So, when you're going to bait these up, you want to keep the traps close together, just like we did on the 155. Keep them close together, put whatever kind of beaver bait you want to put there versus it be barks or, you know, a beaver smell or something like that. Got it. Beaver trail sets, beaver trail sets, beaver trail sets, beaver trail sets.